All right, I got more battles with the Bahiam team. And honestly, I was doing really good with this team yesterday. So I'm actually showcasing two sets in a row, going from 18 to 19, if I'm not mistaken, and then 19 to 20. So yeah, pretty great scenario here. Um, yeah, Astonish is insanely strong now in this new move update. And of course, in the Psychic Cup, Ghost move is going to be pretty strong throughout the format. I mean, there are the occasional Malamar, which, you know, aren't going to be able to get farmed down in that scenario, but there's a lot of fairy types as well running around that put Malamar in check as well. And I'm even running Malamar myself. So that's typically my best way to deal with Malamar is using my own Malamar or play doll at times. I make a great catch here. Honestly, I made some pretty insane plays in this first set. So that allows me to play this a little safer. And yeah, I can just finish up the battle here with a foul play, which is just amazing. I mean, a little bit of a side wave too, but yeah, in comes their Malamar. And I think from here, they just throw the foul play. And I look at this as an opportunity that I can make to the Hyper Beam because I knew I could live just barely one more foul play. The way my, my Malamar calc is in the mirror, it seems that I'm, I mean, I'm assuming most Malamar, it's the same. But I can take two foul plays from another Malamar. And yeah, I usually like to play very aggressive, if even if, with shields up, just because there's times they're going to know, you know, I mean, they're gonna know they can take at least one foul play from another Malamar, so a lot of times they don't shield. And if I connect that Hyper Beam instead, that's gonna be pretty game-changing in the fight. Cresselia. Um, yeah, Cresselia is actually not, I don't know if it's like, it's typically a pretty good Pokemon, but I don't know about in this format because it's bulk's nice. Maybe the bulk can help it out, but it doesn't really have any like attacks that can hit things in this format for super effective. So I mean, I guess it does have moon blast for maybe like Malamar or something, but it's typically not really going to be hitting that hard being Cresselia. So I feel like a uh, fast attack damage or spammy attack is definitely the way to go in this type of format. That's why Rapidash is so good because it can threaten with some real strong attacks like Mega Horn, for example. And yeah, it can get to those moves fast as well. I have heard that people have been running ho high horsepower. I don't really have much to say about that at the moment. I mean, I'm guessing it's for Victini. But anyways, yeah, a lot of like Claydol late leads. So I don't know. I just felt like the way this team was structured, the way I made it, it just felt like really good. Even when I would see Malamar leads, which is probably my worst lead in the format, honestly. Um, yeah, I've been able to switch to my own Malamar and somehow regain like momentum as well. It's kind of insane. But yeah, Bahiam... With the Claydol matchups, typically they don't shield. Occasionally they won't shield. I don't know. Like if someone's like feeling like spicy and they think you are going to bait, which is really like not that big of a difference. Like it's not necessary that you bait with Bahiam at all. Like legitimately, you're doing so much damage just from the Astonish. Even that little chip damage you get from a Rock Slide connecting is going to be pretty significant on a Claydol. So... Yeah, for the most part, they're going to shield at the if you're, like, against it. So you can throw Rock Slide, I feel like, confidently, and they will commit the shield because they don't know what you're doing. They don't know you like that. Um, but at the same time, if you don't feel comfortable and you just throw the Dark Pulses, it's not necessarily a bad thing either, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's better to be safe than sorry, but I've just realized, usually in a format like this where you really can't, risk too much like if you make that risky play and take the dark pulse then you're down bad in this format like really down bad so is it really worth it not entirely also if you're watching this please hit that like button it does help my content out a lot here on youtube and yeah i've been 
doing pretty good this season the last couple seasons you know if you're watch my channel i try to make meme teams try to test out pokemon that will never see the light of day and make them work for a couple sets at least and yeah this season i i did a live stream yesterday i wasn't really thinking much about it but i guess i i ended my elo a little bit under like whenever i finally got my elo revealed it was a little under 2300 which i think is pretty decent for you know my record of not really playing much this season and also i guess i did take this season a little more serious than the previous i have been running teams i do feel are actually like good recommendations to new players and such but yeah, I was kind of, I don't know, it just feels so weird that like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm at like 24 or something right now. I'm right under veteran. Like if I play my, I didn't do my sets at all today yet. I was thinking about live streaming today, but I do got to work late again. I don't know if I will. Um, yeah, I legitimately was not expecting to be that close to veteran since I've barely even hit veteran the last couple seasons for the way I've been playing and how much I've been playing. But I mean... I guess I'll see how today's sets go when I do play them. I mean, I could be jinxing myself and just become stagnant again here. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. I guess uh, whenever I do try a little bit, it's a little bit easier than I remember climbing. But yeah, I don't know. I don't want to jinx myself. I'm just saying that my goal was to actually hit Legend this season. And I guess I'm well on that track at the moment, as long as I don't get too crazy with these team comps. But yeah, I really like this team. I mean, initially, I I think I didn't want to be weak to any of the, like, Galarian, Slowbro, Slowking Pokemon. That was, like, one of the key things. Like, I wanted to make sure I could beat that. I wanted to make sure I could beat Victini. Um, Rapidash is probably one of the harder Pokemon for my team to deal with. But I've not really had many issues either. Because a lot of times, they do, like, delete it. And if they do safe swap it, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're not going to safe swap Rapidash against... Behem. But um yeah, for the most part I've had some success. And as you can see, that's a 5-0 set I did off stream. And this set is actually the following morning. This is the exact set right after. I think I hit 19. Rank 19, yeah. And this is the one where you can get the five encounters. So ideally you do want to win all of these battles just to see if you you get a chance at like a shiny or whatever. But um yeah, I, if you want to watch the live stream, I'll have a link in the description and in the comments. It's my first vertical live stream here on the channel as well, trying to get in that short feed. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just trying to experiment a little bit with the format a little bit. I mean, I'm going to be trying to bring back an old format here soon on a live stream where I play Pokemon Go in Animal Crossing. If you're an old subscriber here, or if you've watched me on Twitch in the past, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do have some old videos here on the channel. I actually even have a Psychic Cup video where I am showcasing that format. It's really cool. If you're interested, you should check it out. I'll also add that in the description. Or I'll put it at, I'll also put it on the, the end cards here at the end of the video for a recommended video. So you can just click on it if you get to the end. But um, yeah, for the most part, definitely trying to do a little bit more live streams and it's like hit or miss with the live streams i guess in regards to how i feel about them i mean sometimes i feel like it puts a little more pressure on me but then other times i feel like i'm not actually i'm like so distracted by the chat that somehow it like makes me better at the game i don't know how to explain it like i feel like it puts me in a zen mode where i'm just like muscle memory doing things and yesterday was a pretty good example of that because i was crushing it i mean i had one one four set but i also had like extreme lag like one of the battles started i was already at half health by the time it let me actually click a move like a fast attack so yeah the lag and stutter in this game right now is still kind of a problem but i've been able to manage through it i haven't been too frustrated i mean I, i've been playing pokemon unite again recently and nothing can make me more frustrated than playing that game in solo queue but I've been better about, you know, managing the way I play those games. The minute I have a bad team, or not, I don't even want to say a bad team. A bad experience is probably the better way to frame it. If I have a bad experience playing any of these games as of lately, I just stop. And it's a beautiful thing because 
I don't hate myself and I value my time that way. And it also leaves open the possibility of playing the game again down the line and enjoying it. It's kind of a crazy concept. But yeah, I've actually been enjoying playing Go right now. Insane enough, there's like a VGC tournament happening this weekend. And, and I've been trying to, you know, I told myself I would play some competitive Pokemon, like for real, like for the circuit this season. But I've like not planned a thing out yet. Not a regional, not a local. I haven't even decided if I want to do VGC or Go yet. And I'm not going to lie. I don't even know if I want to put that high pressure on myself to add that to my schedule things between me you know working on my personal things i have going on and yeah just in general it's just a lot to on take it's not like an easy task to invest your time for something like that and you know i am totally down to it's just i need to really sit down and think about, oh my gosh my cat is vomiting right now hold on no go on. Okay. all right i'll have to <laughs> I have, to get, I have to deal with that after. Okay, baby girl. It's that time for the hairball. Anyways, I don't even know. Could you have heard that? Potentially, that'd be crazy if you could hear that from the microphone. I'm so sorry if that is the case. And there she goes at it again. Okay, baby girl. You're strong. You got this. All right, Victini lead. So, pretty good lead. Pretty much most of the leads are just good for Bahiam. Um... Oh, poor girl, poor baby boo boo. I'm gonna have to give her some pets. Poor little girl, she's an angel. But yeah, anyways, this is fine. I don't really, I could take a V create. I, I've not seen them use overheat once, surprisingly, but I'm sure eventually I'll see the overheat. I thought they might use the overheat in that situation because that would have hurt, but maybe they just assumed they were gonna get the shield regardless. And it's fine. In comes Slowbro, Galarian, and another good scenario for me as well. I can bring in Malamar. I think that's what I do, is bring in Malamar to get some farm. And yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And from here, I will just take a brutal swing knowing that I can take it to the face. Ooh, oh, sorry. Someone subscribed, resubscribed to me there on Twitch. Ada, thanks for the support. I, yeah, this is from my live stream, by the way. I mean, I already mentioned that, but this last set of the stream is the very first set of my live stream yesterday. And yeah, feel free to check out how those battles went. I also did post another video on this team yesterday if you didn't see it. And if you want to see more battles on how I played out different matchups, feel free to check that out. I did do a pretty good job of explaining my thought process of the team there. Um, but yeah, th this is a pretty good situation. With the Rapidash, it really just comes down to if I shield correctly. And I guess because I had shield and the way the whole match was looking, I just figured I might as well just let Behem go. If they bait, it's better for me. If they throw the Mega Horn, whatever, I have two shields and I'll have a little bit of energy gain on whatever I bring in. And that's kind of the plan. So I go for Shadow Ball into Claydol. The opposing Claydol, which is going to do... Oh, oh, they do end up shielding. Makes sense. So I switch into Malamar and they end up switching into their, I think, Galarian Slowbro. And it's just too late. Um, my foul play connects already. I don't have to shield this move. And just retaining that shield for Claydol already puts me in the win con. But, you know, I already have a foul play loaded, so there's no time to waste. Just throw that. And yeah, I think they just end up giving up or whatever there because they weren't really doing much. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this video. The Sasquatch Squad is getting stronger each and every day. You have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whenever tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. If you'd like to watch more Go Battle League content from me, consider watching this video right here or this video right here.